This is the Bears Barroom Radio Network. The following program is recorded live and intended for all audiences. Radio is scripted now. We just come up with it. We don't use computers. We don't rehearse. We're going to talk about this next. We're going to talk about them. We're going to talk about the Bulls. And then we're going to have Brad Big Son. And then we're going to have uh, all this. No. No. If you don't know what you're going to talk about in the top of your head before a show, you shouldn't be in the business. I don't know what you got. I feel like Vince Vaughn in, in a couple's retreat. The sharks are circling. Old school, baby. You're listening to the Mike North Advantage, and it begins right now. That's right. The Mike North Advantage starts right now. I am Aldo Gandia, Mike's wingman. And if you're listening live on our Mixler channel, you know we're teeing it up at the same time the folks at the Masters are teeing things up on this Sunday morning. And we'll talk about Tiger Woods and whether he can win his first Masters in a long, long, long time. We'll talk about those Cubs and White Sox. Oh, boy, what happened to winning in Chicago baseball? And we'll get the lowdown on Mike's picks. How's he doing? And what's he got for us today? We need some money, baby. All that and more on the Mike North Advantage. Mike North, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great, Aldo. Always great to talk to you, my pal. We already set up lunch for next week sometime. Which I'm excited about that. I mean, you know I'm a senior. I'm a shut-in. Any kind of activity uh, eats up some time for me, as you know. And boy, talk about activity today. A cornucopia. That's right. Wow. A cornucopia of things. You got NHL playoffs. You got NBA playoffs. Major League Baseball. Pinch me, please, dear Lord. And then you got the Masters. Come on now! <laughs> you are so right. This is a great time of the year to be a sports fan and then all those football draft nicks are right now pouring over draft scouting reports of guys whose names you've never heard of <laughs> so we you have... want to know the truth <laughs> i haven't poured over one sheet for the draft <laughs> so far that we got time for that oh, yeah. that's gonna happen that's gonna and happen. then everybody's gonna become an expert <laughs> when they first hear of these guys three weeks from now everybody's gonna know about them everybody's gonna do this you know you got the regular guys you know nick Bosa is, is a guy coming out. I mean, we already have heard about him and uh-huh. some other people, uh, Kyle Murray. So it's looking good, but then we're going to become experts on guys that are drafted third, fourth, fifth, sixth. We'll know everything about them, and then when they play, half of them won't make it. They'll be out on the street. <laughs> How true is that? Oh, How yeah. true is that? But this is a great time of the sports year when you got a convergence of all basically every major sport. There's news happening You know, for guys like you and me who love Love sports and 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 guys like you who have that time to just absorb it all. This is Nirvana, right? Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, I remember when the Masters would go on and stuff like that. It, it's my favorite thing outside of uh, you know uh, when you talk about the World Series. I'm talking about individual sports. I'm talking about you know Wimbledon and all these other things. You know, bowling. When it comes to an individual sport, when it comes to an event. I mean, I was stationed in Augusta, Georgia, back in 1972, oh, wow. and Fort Gordon, Georgia, was mere miles from Augusta National, and I'm such a, a, a sports fan, but it was so odd because we weren't really welcome there. Uh, it was 1972. Uh, they have a high white fence, not picket, just uh, cedar painted mm-hmm. all the way around when I went out there. And uh, to be honest with you, they preferred we watch from across the street. Um, (laughs) It was still in its infancy, even though it's 1972 and how it's grown internationally and everything else uh-huh. uh, because of guys like Palmer and Nicholas and now Tiger. It's unbelievable. Yeah, they've actually been trying to fight that image of being, you know, hoity-toity and elitist, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, for some time. And, you know, some of the strict rules that they've had over time, like, you you know, the no sponsorship, uh, uh, which is a great rule. That particular rule is great. No signs of sponsorships anywhere within camera length. But they've also had, over the years, other rules like you you couldn't talk. The broadcasters couldn't talk about the purse money. They couldn't talk about certain things and so forth. And then, of course, you know, even years further, things and you know, all the racial things and stuff. But the Masters has come a long way. It is the premier golf sporting event uh, on television. It's just great to watch the drama that is going to unfold as the day goes on. Today should be tremendous. And of course, every when you talk about golf, you got to talk about Tiger Woods. And yesterday, after his 
his third round, which he shot really well and got into that the top of the leaderboard. In fact, he's going to be among the, the last guys teeing off today. This is what he said about his third round. I just did uh, everything. You know, I, I drove it well, I hit my irons well, and I, I made some pots. Um, and as I said, I just I just let the round just kind of build. Um, you know, I don't need to go after you know, every single flag. Um, just put the ball in the correct spot so I can have gettable looks and gettable putts. And I was able to do that. I tried to keep the ball below the hole as best I possibly could um, and make sure that, uh, you know, I had those type of looks. And if I give myself those looks the way that I'm hitting my lines, uh, I'm going to be all right. What did you think about his play, not only yesterday, but over the, the past three days? It's been unbelievable. I mean, I never thought he'd be this close. Mm-hmm. I was the guy that said, I don't think he'll ever win a tournament again. And then last year he won that tournament, granted, with a small field. Didn't matter. And then from there on, I said, okay, he proved to me, you know how I am, once you do it, yep. you prove to me that you can do it. Mm-hmm. So now, I'm a big backer. I was uh, anti-Tiger. And now I'm saying to myself, look, this guy's phenomenal, look what he's doing. But so are the other guys. And the thing that I've always thought about with the majors is there's always going to be one guy better than him, maybe. Always. And, 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 and even if he came back. Well, I'm not so sure about that now. I will say this, Nicholas and Woods, if you want to make comparisons, the one thing Jack had over Tiger is driving ability. If you look at the contenders right now, Aldo, and I've watched every minute of this. Mm -hmm. In fact, we were supposed to do something on the autobiography today, and I said, nah, they they moved the time up to nine. I've never missed the Masters. Mm -hmm. Not one minute. Mm -hmm. In fact, I had masks. I don't even go to my iPad, usually, as far as live events. But BB put up Masters.com, so I watched the featured groups all week. Yeah. You know, people that were crying because they still are a little bit elitist because they don't start coverage, usually. Uh, yes. First three days till 2 o'clock. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, but I watched it on my iPad, the morning stuff. It was great. I encouraged people next year to do it instead of waiting around till 2 o'clock to see it come on TV. So Molinari's on fire right now. He never bogeys, never makes a mistake. You got Kepka, you got Johnson, you got Tiger. The one thing I'm worried about is Tiger's driving. He's been all over the place. But I will say this, when it comes to the iron game, him and Nicholas were even. When it comes to putting, I think he's a little bit better putter than Jack was. Mm -hmm. So these two guys, the only thing separating them is the four majors. And if he can knock one down today, he's still got three, four, five years Mm -hmm. with the way he's in shape and the way his back's gotten better, where he may be able to challenge that. But this is an opportunity that he can't let go by. And right now, I just think... Somebody else is going to win it. But you know what? If he wins it, it makes everything so much better for the game of golf. And for those of you who are listening and saying, oh, God. Isn't that good? It, it sounds like I was born on a golf course. <laughs> you ever, Come on. Did you ever caddy, Mike? No, but I tipped the caddies well. Because <laughs> the one thing when you do, you better tip well. Because you'll find out from at certain clubs about certain celebrities that don't tip the caddies well, local or what have you. <laughs> so I never wanted to be one of those guys, but I always wanted the caddy a tournament. But now, I mean, it, it, it's what a job it is. Yeah. The caddies become more important. Yes. Now, one of them, they call him Bones. He was Mickelson's caddy. He's now broadcasting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fluff McGowan with Tiger Woods. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, then Steve Williams with Tiger Woods. The caddies have been more prevalent. Back in the day, Arnold Palmer would ask his cat, uh, caddy for a match so he could light his cigarette and mind your business and just carry my bags. Mm-hmm. That has all changed. Yep. And one golfer that I want to uh, talk about is this kid, uh, Brooks Kupka, which I understand now he is vying for his fourth major within a two-year span so he's kind of crept up on me a little bit uh i I remember him winning a major or two but now you know that he's here contending in the masters is in the final group he's got a great chance of uh actually in the next to final group uh he's got a great chance to make history and become like the hottest golfer in the world huh Nothing like an Italian Irishman and a Puerto Rican who one was born or lived uh, in Humboldt Park, the other one in Uptown, talking about the gentleman's game of golf, my friend. Believe me when I tell you this. But I will tell you this. Brooks Kepka, if he walked b- down the street on Michigan Avenue and you and I were yes. walking down the street, 
he'd, we'd, we'd say, how you doing? He'd wave to us and we'd walk right by. We wouldn't even know who he is. He's won three majors in the last six, but here's even the best. Uh-huh. He's the only guy mm-hmm. on in this field, folks, check it out, mm-hmm. over them all, gets made to cut 18 straight times wow. in tournaments. Wow. Nice. Yeah. So he's got that string going. Here's another thing. Anybody who thinks Molinari and Tiger, it's between those two, somebody could go minus five, minus six, minus seven today. Except the winds are a little bit. I've been watching early this morning, and the winds, the flags are really flying. The last couple days, very calm, conducive for these guys to hit the scores that they were hitting. So somebody's going to screw up bad today, and somebody's going to come from maybe back of the pack that we're not even contemplating right now. Well, among the leaders right now are, uh, let's see, I got uh, Tony Finau. He's at minus. Tony Finau, one of the best. Last year, he's the guy that in the par three ran down, uh, dislocated his ankle, Mm -hmm. popped it back in place, and played the Masters. How about that? Without even a cast. (laughs) Nice. You know what? I'm going to digress here a second. The one thing that I love about what Tiger Woods has done for professional golf is that he has forced everybody to get in shape. When I was a uh, reporter for Channel 2 here in Chicago, and this was uh, 1986 or 87, I went out to the Western Open. I was doing a feature on this mobile unit that would treat uh, golfers. They would come in and you know get their shoulder looked at and so forth. So I go in there with my camera crew, and everybody that was getting treated looked like they were my dad and so I, and so i'm, I'm say, I, I asked one of the guys that worked in the mobile units uh, when do the golfers get here he goes this is these, these are professional golfers i'm like oh my god well since then when tiger came in and i mean he was buff and limber and so forth everybody now started hitting the training room and so forth and now you're seeing guys walk down fairways who actually look like athletes whereas in the past yeah, it was it was rare when you saw an athletic golfer isn't that something what he's done for for professional golf well you forget First 10 years, he was a skinny little thing. Then yeah, there was the rumors of the roids, yeah. the rumors of taking care of injuries overseas. Yeah, that's true. Uh, there's been those roid rumors forever. You look at Tiger Woods now, and then you look at him 10 years ago, it's almost like old Barry Bonds pictures and new Barry Bonds oh, pictures. Oh, interesting. So, but but that doesn't wait. That, I'm not saying he's ever done anything. Yeah, there's yeah. been those heavy rumors. Right. And uh, you got Brooks Kepka. Who knows what? I mean, all these guys are muscle men. Now, Brooks Kepka is a muscle man. They say he's the most fit guy on the tour. Mm-hmm. Tiger's fit. Back then, you were fit if you were on the Palmer, but you smoked. He smoked. Jack Nicholas was heavy. Smoked. My favorite guy, John Daly, who won the British Open, he did everything. So, eventually, he just couldn't go anymore. I mean, he... I mean, you want to talk about a meteor that burnt out? It was John Daly. Billy Casper back in the day was heavy. Julio Sporos was heavy. So you're right, Aldo. Tiger, since he came in, a lot of the other golfers have come in, too. There's some thin ones like Justin Spieth, Justin Rose, guys like that. But Rory's gotten bigger. Tiger is massive compared to what he was in 1997. Down the, they don't usually do this. Put a side-by-side picture of Tiger from 20 years ago and now. It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. A couple of other golfers. And I'm not saying that wasn't done from hard work and everything else. Yeah. But but you know what? There have been those rumors. I have nothing to substantiate it by. But I've heard it from people that have been or covered the tour. Hmm. A couple of other golfers I'm going to keep an eye on are Ricky Fowler, who started the day at minus seven. Rick, has Ricky won a, ma- a majors yet? No. no okay. He's he- finished fifth a couple times. He's won the players. Yeah, because I mean, it sounds like you're talking to Ben Hogan, doesn't it? It's a Ben Hogan set. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ricky Fowler, I bet him this week. I bet Rahm at sixteen to one. Oh, okay. He's petered out. He's he's to a hundred to one. You can bet the action today if you want to. I bet Fowler at sixteen to one. He's the only guy I got left. Fleetwood, Rory, let me down. I bet like five guys. Uh, Casey, he crapped the bed. Uh, there's nothing with the system. That, that shows me that. I just go by gut feel how they've been playing. So Ricky is my hope. Okay. Ricky's my only hope at 16 to 1. If he hits that, I'll buy lunch. It's on me. <laughs> All right. I love that. Yeah, baby. I, I got to say this about, uh, you know, for those of us who, uh, for those of you who are listening out there and saying, oh, I can't believe they're talking about golf. Listen. 
you know, golf, yes, can cannot sometimes is, is the most boring sporting event on television. But these major tournaments, and in particular the Masters, on Sunday are just drama to behold. You don't even have to know the game really well. Just follow the storylines. And the, the CBS crew, they usually do a good, a good job of setting the stage up and so forth. And with some of the names that we've mentioned, they're all great storylines. And so the drama as the morning and early afternoon goes on, we should be, uh, be seeing some really great drama on sports TV. Uh, it, it, to me, uh, Mike, as a kid, like you, like you said, I was a humble park kid growing up. You know, nobody right. in my neighborhood knew what a golf club was, but I'd, I'd watch it on TV for the drama and really be sucked into it. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm going to tell you something right now. The, be- the best thing that I would say is that you brought up a good point about, you know, the, the golf fans. The casual fan will come in today. Um the minority fans mm-hmm. will come in today. Mm-hmm. In other words, Tiger's in. There are some people that will never watch golf unless Tiger's involved or somebody that, you know, it's only natural. It's like if you're in a boxing ring and there's a white guy and a black guy boxing, okay? <laughs> there's going to be more eyes at the TV, especially if they're champions, than if it's two white guys or even two African-American guys unless it's like a guy like Ali or Frazier. Mm. You bring in more people. That's what Tiger did imme- uh, immediately. The one thing I'm disappointed, I think Tiger is too, mm-hmm. is that they said once Tiger hit his prominence, that all the inner city kids would run to golf courses and people would want to learn. People of different nationalities. But no! <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a game for people that got money, unfortunately. Still. And there's some people that do wonderful things to bring kids to golf courses and stuff like that. But the influx of, of new golfers, or I think minority golfers, even though it's gone up because of Tiger, it hasn't hit the surge that they thought it was going to hit. Yeah, I think that, I think it went up a little bit, but uh, clearly, you know, it hasn't broken through like no. a lot of people expected. Uh, that is f- too for- much money. Yeah, it is. It's too much money. These it people, is. you know, we grew up. In, we used to laugh at the guys. We'd be we'd be hanging out on Thorndale and Glenwood, mm-hmm. and we'd see two guys with the golf clubs with the little carts that they were going to the L mm-hmm. to go to Wavelet yep. with the plaid pants. We used to laugh at them. We should have been playing. <laughs> we'd hang out. Then we'd play baseball, football. We never went to that. The golf thing for us, where we grew up and where you grow up, Uptown, mm-hmm. Logan Square, Humboldt Park, I'll go all night long. Mm-hmm. Forget about yep. it. I mean, if you lived in Edison Park, you went to Caldwell mm-hmm. or right. some of those others. But where we lived, yeah. Yeah. Waveland was the closest. And, not, you know, we just weren't brought up that way to golf. Right, right. Yeah, I, I recall uh, when Tiger started playing and this supposed golf boom was supposed to happen, I would mm-hmm. I would go play the county, uh, Cook County courses because those were, ooh, somebody just hit a hole in one and then is screaming up and down on my TV. Uh, we'll get a name for you in a second. But it's I re- not the Masters. It hasn't started yet, although, but that's fine. I am, I'm glad that you're getting excited. <laughs> that, is it Nicholas from last year? No, it's no, it? this is the Masters. Uh, sec- 21st hole in one and the 16th hole in tournament history. I, I think this is a master. I don't know. I understand, but it's not today. Are you sure? I think well, maybe he did. Is it today? Is it on? Yeah, it's on. I go to CBS. Uh, okay. Yeah, because they've got some golfers. Teen, teen no, off. CBS News Sunday morning is on. What the hell They're just showing them. Yeah, somebody might have been hitting a whole run just now. I got it. Yeah, we'll okay. find out about it. All right. Um, now, there's Tiger. Now, you, you, would you quit looking at old footage? There's Tiger. <laughs> He's at the golf thing. That is the- <laughs> Isn't he? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I was just going to say that. Those got us, got us on the ninth hole of the Masters. All I'm seeing is Tiger stretch his neck. <laughs> I saw that too, okay. But what I was going to say is the county courses. Can we just get back on track, please? <laughs> okay. The county courses at a time when they should have been lowering prices to get this influx of new golfers, they were raising their prices. And I'm saying, well, that's bad, bad thinking. You know, they want to expand the golf and now it's gone from uh, paying $10 for 18 holes to $25. It was ridiculous. But anyway, let's move on and talk about uh, baseball now because we've got a problem here in Chicago. We've got the Southsiders who, ha- who are at 4-9 and nine and the Northsiders who are at 5-9. and nine. Nobody is winning, playing winning baseball. And yesterday, the Northsiders, Kyle Schwarber, was up to bat in the ninth inning, and this happened. The 3-2. 
He went to end the game. Schwarber gets kicked out after the game ends. He is livid with Gabe Morales. Slams his helmet down. That's as upset as we've ever seen him. And the Angels barely hang on. The Angels did hang on. They won the game. And a uh, controversial call by the third base umpire. Kyle Schwarber checks his swing. And the third base umpire, without there being a, a um, uh, what, what do they call it when they go to the third base umpire, a, a appeal, he immediately calls him out. And Schwarber just lost it. Did you see that, Mike? And what were your thoughts? Well, first of all, I'm glad he lost it because that's what they need. They need a yes. guy, and I've been talking about Good this. Point. They need a badass on that team. Yep. I noticed Jake Arrieta is winning right now, and he's got an ERA under three. <laughs> uh, he's doing well with Philadelphia. Yep. It was still just a horrid thing to do. Mm-hmm. Get rid of that guy. I think they've lost a lot of their mojo since then. Mm-hmm. But I've often said they don't have a badass. Whether he swung all the way through or whether he didn't, the thing I liked was his reaction. Mm-hmm. He'll get sus- he'll get fined. Maybe who knows? Do they suspend you any more game? I guess so. It doesn't matter. What I saw is somebody on that team waking up. I think the whole thing is a joke with Joe Madden resting Chris Bryant yesterday. Oh, it was pre-planned three days ago. What are we, in nursery school? You're fighting for a pennant. Yes. I mean, are you kidding me? You're having trouble getting out of the gate. Mm-hmm. You're, you're resting Chris Bryant? Two weeks into the season? Mm-hmm. Pre-planned three days ago? So I'm hoping it's not a bad shoulder uh, like he had last year. I'm hoping it's just a rest. Yep. Uh, but I think if you ask a lot of Cub fans right now um, about Rizzo and about Bryant, I-, I think that if this would have been unheard of three years ago, mm-hmm. but if you said let's try to get rid of him and get people for him, I think some Cub fans, if not a lot, would beat for it. They, 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 Rizzo's still going to put up his 30, and he's going to put up his 100. Bryant is a huge disappointment right now. He really, really is. Uh, you know, all of these guys who, uh, Jesse Rogers, uh, your buddy, and who's been a guest on the Mike North Advantage, sure. wrote a really good article on ESPN.com about this team has failed to get that same vibe from their championship season of 2016, and how do they get that vibe back? And I think that you make a great point. Seeing Kyle Schwarber lose his cool could be the thing that this team needs, and maybe you know some people need to continue throwing some chairs and, 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 and get nasty in the locker room to fire these guys up and get that championship feeling, that vibe, as Jesse Rogers called it, uh, back again because it, there is a lack of Clusterness to this team, and I don't know if it's Madden's fault. I don't know if if these guys just were are, are one year wonder or whatever it is. But if they don't capture that vibe again, then this is going to be like you have written about on Twitter. This is going to be a one and done team. You know, kind of uh, go down in Chicago sports history as a one and done team, and we've seen that so many times before. It would be a shame with so much talent. Well, you know, I said uh, a year ago. I tweeted out they could be the 85 Bears. Yeah. And now people are starting to realize that. Yep. One and done. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Rizzo, I like him. I really do. I think, but I'm tired of seeing him smile in the dugout when we're losing. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of it. Yep. We got within one yesterday and he's smiling in the dugout. I know you're supposed to have fun. I'm just sick of that kind of body language. To me, like last year when it was one to one in the playoffs, he's, he's laughing and chucking up with his friends. With his buddies, and, and everybody's having a good time, and we lose. Mm. We're taking the losses harder than they are. Look, a lot of wonderful things have happened to these guys, and they deserve it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they won the World Series. Rizzo has become a, a cult hero along with the rest of them. But, I mean, to me, the sign of greatness is trying to do it again. And if they can't do it again, they're going to go in his, down in history as underachievers. Yep. They are. Yep. And, and, and all of them will. Because... I know we had once won for 108 years, but now we're going to go another 100 years. Mm-hmm. Because their window is starting to close. Their pitching staff, the Arietta Darvish thing is a nightmare. I called it day one. Period. And I'll always say that. Uh, and, and, and you know what? Don't know, they have not recovered from that. They haven't. You are absolutely right about that. And in fact, Jesse Rogers writes in that ESPN.com article that 
This team in 2016 had great starting pitching, and they don't have that anymore. And you are right, that Arietta mistake is, is, is haunting them. And if they don't get that corrected, somehow the starting pitching, we've been talking about the bullpen a lot. And in fact, yesterday the bullpen walked, I think, eight, giving up six runs, and this to an Angels team that did not play Mike but Trout. They been, but they had been doing better of late. That, I understand, that is true. Though, their bullpen is a concern. But you're right about the starters, and Jesse's right about the starters, Aldo. Mm-hmm. No question mm-hmm. about it. The Arietta thing to me was just a thing about toughness, about he was like one of the faces of the franchise. Uh, he was the guy that was the badass. Uh, he would put out jokes on Twitter. But, yeah. you know, when it came to the toughness, I think he was the toughest of them all. And they gave him to the Philly. They, you know, see you later. We'll bring in Hugh Darvish, who the other night's pulled. He should have stayed in. Yeah. I mean, he did well, but they're, they're, they're trying to coddle him like a child, except mm-hmm. children don't make $135 million bucks. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> very true. Very right? true. Yes, very, very Come true. Come on now! <laughs> By the way, Bryson DeChambeau, and you're right, it has started, and, and Bryson DeChambeau, with apologies to Eldo Gandia, I was wrong, you are right. I think I was going on Eastern time. He hit the hole in one. He's the guy out okay, there. And they went nuts, and he's he's way out of it. He's minus two, but you never know, man. You get a hole in one early. Yes. Anything could happen. Yes. All right. Uh, so we're going to do an abbreviated show. We're going to talk a little White Sox. We're going to get Mike's picks, and then we're going to go to the TV screen and watch this. What's well, going to be an abbreviated match? Well, we could stay. Yo, we could stay for a while. I, I don't want to do an abbreviated show. Okay, this let's... is fine. I got the screen on. It. All yeah, right. Keep everybody in tune. Okay. I love it. I love it. <laughs> let's talk hey, about. Hey, on. There's Francisco Molinari. <laughs> oh, That's oh, right. oh, <laughs> The leader is up uh, minus thirteen. You know what's funny about him? He shaved this morning. Did he? He's already got a 5 o'clock channel. When he was born, he had a 5 o'clock channel. I'm telling you. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, <laughs> I, I love this. I love this. You know, we could get in trouble if we do play-by-play of golf because, you know, you can't do that. Oh, really? Good. That would be good. You don't like it. I love it. You know me. <laughs> yes. When somebody's after us, I love it. And Molinari just drives one off the tee, and it's off the green, and it's in the rough. Sue us! <laughs> I love it. I love it. I want to make the front page of the USA today. Sue Gandia. Well, no, I'm not going to bring Aldo in there. Sue me. Sue me. Funny how. Funny ha ha. Sue me. <laughs> All right. Tiger, Tiger's in the fairway here. Uh, Mike, where did you call this for, for our listeners? I will, ladies and gentlemen. Tiger looking down. Looking down of where he's going to hit the ball. He's minus 11. Right now, it is the second. Uh, this is his second shot. He's about 160, 170 yards from the green. Let's see what happens as he. And the ball, the laser, the ball is going to be a nice shot. And it is. It's a fantastic shot. About 10 to 15 feet from the hole. Right there. He's already engaged. Nice. Play by play. And they pay guys on the golf channel 500 grand a year for that. I love it. This is a hard job. Only I have to whisper it. (laughs) That's right. That's right. We forgot that you have to whisper. How about your guy Mancada? He's hitting two ninety six now. You had him as the next guy to hit four hundred about two weeks ago. Hey, you How about know, that one? Uh, it's still early in the season. He's going to get back. He's going to stay around that three hundred average. Oh, sure he is. <laughs> oh yeah. You know what? Here's what I'm going to tell everybody: the White Sox aren't winning for another decade. Period. Yeah, I mean, they are absolutely dreadful. They have no pitching. They have three, four guys. Montana, one of them, who's looked good of late, but they're sinking. El- uh, Eloy did well the other day at two home runs. Mm-hmm. I like what some of the regular players are doing, but they gave away pitching. Mm-hmm. They have no pitching. And you know what? You're never winning without any pitching. Yep. And uh- that's not a rhyme. That's the truth. <laughs> I love it. And speaking of Eloy, this is what happened. He hit his first home run. Let's go to the call. Mercado runs. Jimenez, a towering fly ball to center field, and it is up and out of here. Mount Eloy erupts for the first time, and it's 7 5 socks. If you're with us for the start of the game, I told you that Eloy is going to hit his first home run in this series, and quite possibly it's tonight. 
And he finally got it, and that's the first of what is going to be many, folks, because if this young man stays healthy, he's not going to be a star. He's going to be a superstar. You agree with that? Uh, Eloy Jimenez is uh, going to be a well, superstar? Yeah, he was the guy that I was pegging out of all of them. I said the rest of them were bums, <laughs> from Kopech to uh, Mankata to all of them. This is the guy that I pegged. Uh, and that I was hoping would do well. He's hitting 300. Uh -huh. He's hitting the ball. He's getting a, a line of pitching. Um, he's one of the guys they've hyped since he was in the minors. And they hyped them all. Uh -huh. So when you hear the hype for, the, for him, you're sort of like, well, they hyped all these other guys. And quite frankly, most of them are injured or aren't getting the job done. But this guy's a guy that uh, I think is going to go the other way. Now, by the time they're all ready to go, Abreu's going to be done, and he's hitting a sparkling 193 right now. Uh, I don't know uh, uh, if this is a rebuild. I heard somebody say the other day on David Kaplan's show that it was a, uh, the third year of the rebuild. Now, it could be the third year, but it looks like the first year. When the Cubs are in the third year of the rebuild, folks, the arrow was pointing up. Anybody that tells me the arrow's pointing up, with the White Sox in their third year, if that's what you want to call it. Because I've been through about six rebuilds with this team. This is about the fourth year, I would say. Anybody that thinks this arrow is pointing up for the White Sox is either related to Reinsdorf or to some of the investors. <laughs> or worse for them. Period. 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 They stink. They stink. That is so true. They stink. Right now, they stink. That is true. But I told you maybe about three, four shows ago that I got some hope that this White Sox team is going to play 500 baseball by the end of the season. And then you said, no, they're, you know, 69, 70, 71 wins there. So we'll see what happens at the end of the season. Well, let me ask you a question. Okay. Do you think this team's really going to be 500 as you're looking now? Well, you know, I, I'm uh, projecting if, if guys get better, uh, as the season goes on, yeah, I do think they can be 500. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll revisit this many times, I'm sure. Oh, yes. It's, it's a long you know, I summer. I think you might abandon ship about eight, oh, late August with I've your been, little idea. I've been known to do that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but surprise me. Surprise us. Okay. Do yes. what the Bears did. But, you know, I look at their players. Uh -huh. There's two players that I would want right now on their team mm -hmm. if I had another team. That's it. There's not a lot of players that I would want off that team. I mean, there's like if you look at the Cubs, there's four, five, six guys I'd want off the Cubs. Seven, eight guys mm. off the Cubs. You know, some pitching, a little bit, maybe a couple of position players. Nobody. There's only a couple guys on the Sox. Mm -hmm. Maybe Jimenez as one of the guys that I would want. Uh, I wouldn't want anybody else, I don't think, to be honest with you. Well, who do I want? Quintana? Who do I want? Rodon? And, and by the way, Rick Renteria couldn't manage couldn't manage a one aisle grocery store <laughs> in a town of two hundred. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this guy the other night just pulled Rodon out of the game and put uh Yomer Garcia and, and the guy's made nothing but errors. He put him in for defense. The guy makes an error, breaks the game open. This guy has no feel as a manager. That's why they should he was an interim manager that they've glorified in White Sox land as the next uh, Sparky Anderson or something. He's Uncle Rick and it's not gonna work. Period. So, so if uh Joe Madden is managing his last year on the north side, would you like to see him move to the south side and take over this Sox team? I think it would be hard for them to work there because Reinsdorf and all those guys, he'd want to do his own ideas. Mm -hmm. And they like to put their thumb on you. Kenny Williams, who's quite frankly one of the worst GMs who's ever lived, got lucky one year mm -hmm. with some veteran players. And then Rick Hahn, who's nothing but a puppet. Uh, they, Reinsdorf, there's just too much overbearance over there. That's why... You have uh, guys with lifetime contracts that, quite frankly, if they were if they were traffic cops, would cause an accident a day. Yep. That, good point. It's what it is. Yep. All right. I got a soundbite from Joe Madden. Getting back to that Cal Schwarber. Oh, uh, Joe Madden. If they, look, yeah. if I don't think they'd want him. I don't think they could afford, they'd want to pay for that, him. That's true. But if he's gone, if, if the Cubs get rid of him, they're never finding another guy better than him. Why? If they make the playoffs this year, mm -hmm. am I supposed to think that it's going to get better
under us. Uh, let's say they don't win the World Series, but they won under the guy. They make the playoffs every year. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to hear that his message is being drowned out. It's not his fault that Chris Bryant, you know, doesn't show up to play every day. It's not his fault that some of these other guys are, aren't getting the job done. What I'd like to see is a little attitude adjust, uh, 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 adjustment like I saw yesterday with Schwarber. It's up, and I want to see Joe get kicked out of a game. Mm-hmm. I want to see Madden instead of, you know, being the guy with the parrot on his shoulder feeding them you know, cashews. You know, in the dugout. (laughs) That's what I want to see. But there's no doubt if the White Sox wanted to make a hit, that's the guy they would go get. And you got a billionaire owner. And he's going to worry about how much he's going to pay him? Give me a break. (laughs) Well, um, I I do want to get back to this Joe Madden, Kyle Schwarber check swing. Because Madden Mm -hmm. said after the, uh, the game, he said this about that check swing. You see that check swing where the hands do this, and to me that's not a swing. It's what you do with the barrel, and that's why that's everybody's worried about electronic strikes. On I want an electronic method to control a check swings. What do you think about that, Mike? Do you think that you know? Uh, I've always I think he's idiotic. <laughs> <laughs> you want an electric laser to, to check out check swings? <laughs> Let me ask you something. Did he go out and argue? Uh, yeah, well, he did because uh, the game was over. But he went out and argued a little bit. Uh, no, I'm sorry, already <laughs> walking off the field. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know what? The, Joe, Joe is quirky. Joe wants this. Joe wants that. Joe <laughs> wants electronic strike zones. Everything else. I like it the way it is. Period. And you know what? Schwarber, take that as a learning experience. But that's not the reason you guys are five and nine right now, and about four and a half games out. <laughs> no, it's not. But but you know what the, what? the interesting thing to me is that that's always been, in my opinion, the most difficult call for an empire is the check swing because it goes so fast. That bat going across the, the plate and then coming back, it goes so fast. I don't know if the human eye can really, really make a a good call on that. And maybe with instant replay being used now, maybe that should be used for that particular call because it's such a difficult call for the third base and home plate empires to make. Do you buy that at all? You know what? I watch a lot of baseball, mm-hmm. and to be honest with you, I think they get it right 95% of the time with, okay. with the two bumps. I do. I think they get it, and when they show the replay, it's usually right. Now, I'm not going to say they don't make mistakes. Sure. Absolutely. And the strike zone moves around on some umpires. Oh, but I think the more you tamper with things, now the NFL is going to have pass interference called replay. Mm-hmm. It, it, you're going to just take more time to check all this out. The rhythm of games is over with. Great moments can be clouded. If a guy makes a one-handed catch and then it hits hits the ground, holds on to it, and it rolls out, and, st- and, and the ump or the ref raises his arms, touchdown! That's a great moment, regardless of whether. And then they go, "We're going to go to a replay," and then they reverse it. Yeah. So, I just think it's time to let humans who made these games great. From baseball players to umpires, I think baseball does a good job. I think they've done some safety things that they didn't have to do. Uh, I heard Andy Van Slyke say the other day, the worst rule they've ever made Mm -hmm. is the double play where you can't take out the runner. Mm. Where you can't fight through second base anymore. (laughs) He goes, that was a huge part of baseball that would stop double plays. Mm -hmm. It would make guys drop the ball sometimes. And they did it for 100 years. Couple guys get hurt, and then the next thing you know, you can't do that anymore. You slide before the bag, and now they know they're not going to get hit, and they make the double play. Well, I'll add to that. If you remember Pete Rose sliding into Bob Fosse in the 1967 sure. about uh, uh, All Star game, and they then eliminated the contact between base runner and catcher. I missed that contact. That was so much sure. fun. Now I know it was dangerous for the catchers, but hey, the, the game has to have an element of danger for it to be different than you know watching a bunch of kids playing over at Buffalo Grove Park uh, Little League. So. Uh, uh, you know, I, I miss I miss some of those uh, some of those dangerous plays. Now, I, you know, for my gratification, I don't want anybody to get hurt and killed or anything like that. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if somebody gets hurt because you know what? That was part of the game. Part of the game is taking some risk. Yes. If usually nobody got hurt, right. even if they had their legs taken out. But I'm sick and tired of Joe Q. Public, all of us going, "Oh, we want to save these thirty million dollar a year athletes' lives." No. The game was built on this stuff, and to take out these 
rules that we've been in mm -hmm. forever mm -hmm. because of concussion protocol and all this garbage. It, 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 it's, it's become a softer game. Look, I'm happy, like you said, everybody's safe. But you want to know something? Ray Fossey. That's the best thing that ever happened to him. Best thing. Because who knows what would have happened. He had a, he's got a 40-year job in baseball broadcasting. Mm. And a lot of it was because of that. Yeah. And he does a great job with Oakland. Yep. And, and you clearly got the name right. I got it wrong. It is Ray Fossey. I think I said Bob Fossey, the famous Broadway. <laughs> Bob Fossey was a hound dog. Bob Fossey was a Chicago guy. That's right. Bob Fossey, for our listeners out there, read about him. All that jazz. Read about him. He put him down and knocked him down. Mm. He, he laid more holes than the Chicago Fire Department. Bob Fossey, baby. A legend in Chicago. Uh, Mike, you talked about Tiger Woods having problems off the tee. Well, on the second he hole... He laying holes back in the day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> on the second hole, he has pulled one way, way to the left, and he's in trouble. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with Tiger. Well, you know what? I told Greeny this morning, Greenberg was on, uh -huh. on Twitter, mm -hmm. saying I know, everybody knows where my loyalties lie, and he loves Tiger. Mm -hmm. I said, basically, Mike, he's been wildest off the tee. Mm. Out of them all. Mm -hmm. Out of them all. And, but he's good at getting out of trouble. But you can't win on Sunday like that. And you're right. He's in a bad spot right now. Yes, he is. All right. Uh, it is time for Mike, mm -hmm. the hottest handicapper yeah! in the world, to give us his picks Come for Sunday morning. Now! Yeah, baby. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. 12 and 6 overall. This is unbelievable. You go, Mike, I've been listening to Fernando for like 45, 50 weeks. You know what? I mean, you just keep it going. It's getting harder and harder, folks. Yesterday, for instance, I had I had Toronto. I had the I had Toronto Raptors. And what do they do? Kyle Lowry, who is who would tell you he's a great guard, had no points in 35 minutes. And they only lost by three. That's the way life is, baby. Mm -hmm. You know what? Mm -hmm. the, system, the system can't make a guy go out there and score five points even. <laughs> and what a shame. And you know what? He's got to just keep deferring. They, if they would have just let... And they got to quit resting Leonard so much during the game. Because mm -hmm. Toronto, I got news for you. Orlando could shoot the rock. <laughs> uh, but today, let me tell you something, folks. I got a winner for everybody. First of all... In Major League Baseball, you got the Mets playing the Braves. Okay? Aldo's going, uh-oh, where's he going with this? <laughs> yes. Well, I don't know if he was really saying that, but I just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> anyway, I like, ladies and gentlemen, the Braves today. Now, DeGrom is pitching. And the Mets are nine, are basically nine and five, while the Braves are eight and six. Now, Tehran is pitching for the Braves. It's a 6-0-5 game. I would take the run and they have minus 120 and take the Braves in this game. That's a good price. Take the Braves. The Grom last year, they didn't hit for him. This year they are hitting a little better for him. But he had a lot of 2-1 to -one games last year, 3-2 to -two games. I mean, the guy was a Cy Young Award winner because he had such a low ERA, but he got no support. So I'm going to take the Atlanta Braves on the run line. And then a team that basically I love, I'm going to go against, because the system tells me to go against it. Folks, listen, I don't make these picks. I've told Eldo. I've told everybody. I've told members of people's family. I go, listen, it's the system. I'm the spokesman for my system. Did I invent the system? Yes. Do I live and die with the system? Yes. I am going with my own system. But I'm just the messenger boy. Take the Pistons today, plus the 13 against the Milwaukee Bucks. I love the Bucks. I love the Greek freak. I think he's the best player in the game. Uh, but I'm going to go with the fabulous Detroit Pistons. When was the last time they were called that back in the bad boy days? <laughs> really? But they'll be fabulous for me. I'll, I'll be cheering like I own the team, folks. So take Atlanta on the run line and take Detroit plus the 13. Eldo, back to you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, do you have a start time in front of you for that Pistons-Bucks game? Is that, a ten, uh, is that yes. an evening game? They're both 6 o'clock games that I'm giving you tonight. So, you know what? Try to be a little disciplined. Um, 
I like Portland today. I, I would go light on that if I were you folks, but, uh, you know, there's been two upsets already. Mm-hmm. And by the way, Steph Curry's the best player in basketball. No more LeBron. I don't want to hear about Durant, even though he was finals MVP. Steph Curry proved to me again last night. The Warriors go out and just beat up the Clippers, who've been playing good basketball, and he hits for 38 points. Where was Golden State before Steph Curry got there? Yeah. And then he got there, they won, and then Durant came after they won. Mm-hmm. So say whatever you want. Steph Curry, to me, is the best player in the game, man. I, I mean, seriously, he is a game changer. He shot a ball from like 20, 10 to 15 feet behind the three-point line last night, and it went right in. Man. Unbelievable. It, it, do you think that Steph has changed the game? You know, uh, brought it back to outside shooting, which is where the game was born with the jump shot. Uh, do you think that he's kind of brought uh, uh, changed NBA basketball? Because it seems like since he came onto the scene, more and more teams now are going to the three point shot, and that the NBA has transformed a little bit. And do you think that Steph Curry is the guy behind that? Oh, uh, absolutely. And then you hear teams that, like the Bulls say, we want to be like Golden State. You can't be. You want to copy somebody's style, you better have their players. Right. I've never heard people. The copycat leagues in the NFL are going to copy the 49ers. Yeah, but you don't have Joe Montana. <laughs> you don't right. have Jerry Rice. <laughs> yes. You don't, have, you don't have these guys. You don't have Roger Craig. You don't have Rathman. Mm-hmm. How are you going to copy them? <laughs> We're going to copy how Baltimore plays defense. Wait a minute, you don't have Ray Lewis. Yeah, Ed Reed. You don't have Ed Reed. Yes. <laughs> when I hear that people want to copy, Steph Curry, to me, changed the game where the three-point shot is a, is a detriment. I bet you if you check, let me just check real quick, because okay. this is what I do for the fans out there, okay? I'll check the scoreboard right now. I bet you the NBA scoreboard, mm-hmm. if I look, for instance, I'll look at the Raptors game, the box score, mm-hmm. they lose by three. And I'll tell you where they lost the game, besides Lowry not scoring. Okay? Mm-hmm. Besides Lowry not scoring, the game was lost because they went 12 of 36 from the three-point line. Mm. 36 times they <laughs> shot three-pointers. Mm. Uh, talking about Toronto. Right. Okay? Where the Magic shot 28 and made half of them. Mm. That's the game. Yeah. I mean, you're, not that... Not that they're not scoring as many three-pointers, but they're missing more three-pointers and not getting the offensive board. And then the the long rebounds turn into easy points for the other team. I watched the game yesterday. And then here's another reason you lose in the playoffs. Because free-throw shooting, okay? Mm -hmm. They lost at the free-throw line. Also, the Magic was 18-20. to That's pretty good, folks. That's almost 100%. Okay? Do you know... They were 9 of 14. <laughs> Toronto. They didn't go to the line a lot because they shot a lot of threes. And they did. And they almost just made half. They barely made half of them. So you look at the stats and you look at turnovers, you look at free throws, and you look at the three point line. And if you show me the stats without the score, I could usually predict who won. Mike, I'm looking at the stats now. Steve, uh, uh, Steph Curry had 38 points and, and 15 rebounds. Holy yes. cow, and a seven assist. I don't know uh, the LeBron ball washers, anybody else, Durant. I don't know how in this day and age, when Golden State's got a chance to win three straight, and Golden State used to be a, just a stepping stone, mm-hmm. you know, to get somewhere. Golden State was insignificant from the time Rick, until when Rick Barry played. Right. How can you say anybody is the best player in basketball? How can you say that when Steph Curry's playing? Yeah. I don't. I just don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't get it either. So these fifteen are... rebounds. The guy's a half pint. <laughs> yeah. The how... guy's a half pint. <laughs> and how about little DJ Augustine, former Chicago Bull, hitting twenty five mm-hmm. points, including the game winner for the Orlando Magic? Just another case of a former Bull or former Chicago sports player going on and grabbing headlines with the other team that he's playing with. Isn't that sad? Well, how would you like to be Lowry? You have no points, and Augustine's got 25, and you're guarding him. Jeez, that is wild. And Augustine's always been a good player. But yes. he's a former of a lot of teams. Yes. He's not just a former Chicago Bull, right. but he's the type of guy you want on your team. Yeah, no He's doubt. unafraid. They have this 
guy on the other team on Toronto, Van Fleet, mm -hmm. who's the same type of ball player. He played 27 minutes, and he had 14 points for Toronto, and he was 5 of 9. I'm sorry. He should have played more minutes, and you should have sat Lowry on his ass. Because I'll read Lowry. Lowry was 0 for 7 from the field, 0 for 6 from the three-point land. He did have 8 assists. And he was a plus 11, so I'll give him that on defense and offense. But zero points. Zero. Mm. You can't win a game that way. Who do who do you like to win this I game? sound like Naismith, don't I? <laughs> I sound like the guy that put the peach basket up, don't I? Breaking it down. Uh, James Naismith would be like about 160 years old now, I'm, I'm guessing. And looking good, I call him Jimmy. <laughs> Yeah. Mike, who do you like in these NBA finals? You got a favorite right now? Obviously, it's I want like somebody that I look, I think Golden State. It's, yeah. it's a joke. Yeah, it is. That's what's happened to the league. They got top heavy. Durant killed it by going over there, being a front runner. Yeah. It hurt. And then you got DeMarcus Cousins, who, see, <clears throat> DeMarcus Cousins is a guy that's got number one talent. Mm hmm. But seriously, Gary used to say this about people, about certain people. $10 million worth of talent, but a 10 cent brain. Mm. But Marcus Cousins, I can trust you this. I can trust you. I, trust me on this. If, 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 it was, if he was six feet or under, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, if he was a, a foot shorter, I'd be flipping him the keys and telling him to get my car. <laughs> <laughs> This guy, I mean, he got ejected the other night. How do you get ejected? You're a secondary player, no matter how you were heralded. You're a secondary player who's injured every year, and you're on Golden State. You're getting ejected like you're somebody. <laughs> he wants to get in the headlines. He's the only way he's going to... Right? <laughs> My God. I mean, you, you, you know, be happy where you're at. You talked your way onto the team, just like Durant did. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, and that's basically what Durant... Look, Durant's a great ball player, mm -hmm. but he'll never be considered by me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As, the, as the engine of that team. Yeah. That's that. That is my guy. How, that's, that's Steph Curry. Let me ask you this. How is is it different, you know, when the Bulls won six NBA championships in the, in the 90s? I remember players, you know, from other teams saying, well, we all know the Bulls are going to win this thing again. How is it different uh, now with the Warriors and, and and than it was with the Bulls? Because for for I, I think in the nineties there was still drama involved, and now with the Warriors it seems like the drama uh, of who's going to win the NBA championship is, is has dissipated tremendously. Don't you think? Yes, they, there's no way. See, Seth Curry couldn't have been the player he was back in the eighties and nineties. <laughs> Not the way they, they, they fouled. They would have wiped the floor with him. <laughs> yes, they would have played. The defense on him. I mean, Jordan would have guarded him. I know that Steph's probably a little quicker, but Jordan would have bullied him. Oh, yeah. Steph couldn't have even have guarded him. Who would Steph Curry have guarded? Mm -hmm. Paxson? <laughs> I mean, yet Pippen, yet Jordan would throw you around the room. Because mm -hmm. yep. they got thrown around the room. So it's a different time, but if you're just going by, you, you know, if you touch these guys, it's a foul. I don't see how anybody beats Golden State. The only way you could beat these teams was playing a different style back in the day. What did the Bulls have to contend with, let's bully them if we can't. The Knicks. Right. With Anthony Mason. With mm. John Starks. Oh, yeah. With Ewing. Mm -hmm. The Pistons. With Dumars. With Lambeer. Mm -hmm. With Isaiah. Rodney. The Celtics. Yeah. With, with Cornbread Maxwell. Mm -hmm. The B Bird. McHale. Bully them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't know every year they were going to win. Yeah. Not like I know every year Golden State's going to win. Because they almost lost to Utah. They, they did lose to the Pistons early before Jordan got it all together. Right. So we didn't know they were going to win every year. As, you know what killed LeBron? Steph Curry. Yeah. He, he was head and tails above everybody. Mm -hmm. And then this kid shows up. And the next thing you know, Golden State's winning the titles. Yet when you ask who's the best player in basketball, you'll hear about 10 different other guys before Steph Curry. I'm a Steph Curry guy. Mm. You know, I, 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 <laughs> you just got, you got me thinking because 
Yeah, yes. everybody Look does. Out now. <laughs> Come on now. Yes, you, you, everybody talks about LeBron being the best player, but yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe Steph Curry is really the best player in basketball and has been for the last few years. It's not LeBron. LeBron is a physical freak. There's no doubt about that. But yeah, he he I don't think he's the best player. Uh, I think Steph no. Curry is. I think you're right. I, I haven't thought but about Durant's it. Durant's good, but see, Curry, Curry just, when he got there, changed everything. Mm-hmm. He's the guy. It's like somebody showing up and Jordan's at the top of his game and knocking him off the pedestal. Yet everybody's saying Jordan's still the best player. Well, if the Bulls would have been coasting and won a couple titles and they were ready to win some more, mm-hmm. and some guy showed up out of nowhere and overshadowed the Bulls and Jordan. We would have thought, wow. I mean, Jordan had immense talent. But to come in like that and to take over, like 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 Golden State did, I just don't think Steph Curry gets enough credit. I don't. I agree. I agree. Mike, what's the latest with the movie and some of your other projects? Uh, I know the ESPN show is Gangbusters. Tell us yep. a little bit about what's going on. Well, you know what, uh, today, and uh, you can check it out, we got Portland today, I got Portland, uh, so check it out for that pick, I'm just giving that out right now for everybody, uh, and, uh, and, and, and you know what, the, the movie is going great, in fact, we're going to reconvene after Easter, uh, uh, BB and I made some changes to the first act, mm-hmm. so we're done, except for them having to put a couple things into the first act, mm-hmm. so now we're going to start the second act after Easter, it's three acts. Hopefully it will be done uh, in about three months, and then we go into production type of phases and take it from there. Things are going good at Bears Barroom. Things are going good with the Mike North Advantage. We're doing good. We're 12 and 6. So it's all been good, Aldo. I, I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm going to watch the Masters and, and just enjoy it. I want you to have a good day and everybody else to have a good day. It's just everything's going good. My wife's healthy. The dog's healthy. You get a little limp for a while. we got to have a little steroid. My dog's on steroids. So watch out. <laughs> yeah. He goes after the food bowl. He goes after the food bowl more aggressively now than he ever did. Oh yeah, uh, and he barks harder. <laughs> Tooch uh, popped in with a quick question for you. He asked that if you were the Bulls' general manager, who would you draft in the upcoming NBA draft? Now, of course, we don't know where the Bulls are drafting yet because they got to go through that lottery system. They could have the first pick in the draft, and of course, we all know who the first pick in the draft is going to be yeah. this year. But if they fall to second, third, or fourth, do, do outside of Zion Williamson, let me phrase the question this way: outside outside of Zion, is there another NBA college? I mean, excuse me, college play, uh, prospect that you would like to see on the Bulls? Well, the kid from uh, Murray State who opened everybody's eyes, oh, yeah. or whatever his name was. Yeah. I mean, there's only a few guys. Yeah. Look, look. If we don't, I want Williamson. Anybody else? If somebody takes somebody else over Williamson, that guy should be fired. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I, you know, if Paxson, if Paxson, who's got a lifetime contract, folks, Apparently. him and, him and Gar Foreman, believe me when I tell you this, they got lifetime contracts because when Magic Johnson mm-hmm. leaves because he's got 37 wins and he's not happy, and then you got two guys here that got 22 wins and they got lifetime gigs, something's not right. Um, but I will tell you this. To me, it's Williamson or Bust. Everybody else is a project. I don't care, and I'm sure there'll be some guys that are good who thought the kid from Utah was going to be good and some of these other guys that come out of nowhere. But Williamson's the guy, if they could get him. But it seems to be angling towards New York now, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. You know, we, we should touch on the whole Magic Johnson thing because here's a wow, guy. Wow, I'm glad I reminded you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Here's a guy who, NBA superstar, gets a dream job that he probably had been thinking about for many years, which is to run the Lakers franchise. And what does he do? He doesn't show up for work. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what's really funny about this? That people want to see people of minority status with our leagues in higher positions. Mm-hmm. you got a guy in higher position. He says, man, I don't like this. I want to go to D. Wade's. A party after his final game. Wait a minute. You're the president of the Lakers, and you're sorry you're missing Dwayne Wade, who's on another team's retirement game in Brooklyn with LeBron and Chris Paul. Magic Johnson should never be given any responsibility again. 
for any team. <laughs> he showed his true colors. He's been a failureist coach. He's not a front office guy. Quite frankly, he was lazy. He took a position he didn't deserve, but because of his status, they thought he would drag free agents here. He failed at that also, mm -hmm. and free agents don't want to play for LeBron. Then the Anthony Davis thing gets out of, out of whack. They screw that up. Go away. Enjoy being happy again. You knew you were losing your mystique of being Mr. Happy Magic, but you should not. You shouldn't be involved. You you shouldn't be a boss over a bathroom attendant. Yeah. Period. The, these guys, and, and I don't know if it, it's so much that Magic was lazy because he was involved in so many other things. It's not like he was sitting around, you know, eating popcorn and watching movies. Yeah, but he's not at the desk. Exactly. You're, you know, you're, I know he had Palinka, but wait, wait. When the, when the, when people in the media are saying he wasn't showing up for work. I'm sorry, what other things does he do? He doesn't work the popcorn uh, concessions at Magic Johnson movie theaters. <laughs> he's the magic, he's the figurehead. But with this job, you got to play it. you got you to study. Now, yes. I'm with you, though. Yes. I'm with you. He had because to. they got a guy named Rob Palenka right. that was the GM, but he says there's backstabbing and everything else. Is it the right thing to do to just call a press conference without even consulting your boss? <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> Oh, she's my, my problem. friend. Oh, so you embarrass her? <laughs> you, you flipped the rug from under Jeannie Buss? Come on. <laughs> hey, Mike, before I let you go, uh, you're not a fan of Game of Thrones, correct? I said this morning, if it was in my backyard, I'd shut the drain. So it looked like one of the medieval time things right off of 90. <laughs> That's what Game of Thrones is to me. I went with my dad once. He wanted to go. I said, is this almost over to myself? Because my dad was older. Is this almost over? So you're not in love with the HBO show that is probably the talk of the world. This Game of Thrones, it's the final season. They've it's got the talk of the nerds. <laughs> of the dorks. Because the Sopranos, whether they like it or not, the Sopranos is the greatest oh, yeah. series ever produced by HBO. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And anybody, I'll, I'll argue that all night long. They put every, they put HBO for for dramatic television on the map, mm -hmm. on the map. Well, they got... had fifteen million people watching them like fifteen twenty years ago when everybody didn't even have cable. That is, that is true. That is My true. God. But I'm happy for anybody that likes it. You just remember, look in the mirror, and 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 before you go to bed tonight, when you have your little costume on, thinking you're one of the guys, <laughs> and just say to yourself. I'm working at Subway tomorrow. That's all. <laughs> with that, we will say goodbye. And there's nothing wrong with that. I worked the hot dog stand for years. You know, if Game of Thrones was going on right now, I might like it. I might be one of the characters if it was 25 years ago. But no. I'm not a big fan. How about you? You like it? I I, I think it's a great, great show. Um, and so I'm looking forward to this final season. Uh, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna put on my my sword and, and gladiator outfit and, and watch it along with the other nerds. <laughs> Remember the Grateful Dead? Oh yeah, the Dead Heads and all. I that was stuff. grateful when they were dead. <laughs> How I feel about the Game of Thrones. Goodbye. Don't forget I that. I love you, Aldo. I love you too. Don't forget that the Mike North Advantage returns. <laughs> Tomorrow, Monday night, Mike will have a very, very special guest. And then Draft on yep. Tap, middle of the week. We've got lots of programming on Bears Ballroom Radio Network. It's all headlined by Mike North. Mike North, thank you very much. See you, buddy. Take care, everybody.